Alright, so now with squats, pretty much just start with uh, one plank at the side, maybe 20 reps. It's the warm up set, that second kind of intermediate warm up set. Might add a 35, again, 8 for 15, 20. But for that first real work set, load back on 45. And 12 is really my max, and I'll try and stay at 12 reps as many weights I add on. Therefore, I have this kind of set ceiling limit for my reps. As long as I'm increasing the weight and progressively overloading my muscle, my body has some kind of simulator to grow from that ceiling limit instead of dropping the reps down as I increase the weight. Just a side note on my uh, philosophy with the technique is really go as low as you're able to and then have a cutoff point. Like some people might stop when their hips become hollow with their knees. For me, I go as deep as I feel I can and then up as quickly as I can. As long as I'm moving the weight and actually contracting my quads, squeezing them as I lift up, finishing with my hips forwards and take a breath in instantly push my hips back and sit back down into it. So about 90 seconds in between, we use the foam roller, stretch out those muscles, and then load some more weight on, start to increase that poundage until I'm at my 12 rep max. So uh, this here is the travel roller, basically a hardened kind of inner shell with the soft foam outer shell. And what I do is uh, pretty much just roll on it, finding any Kind of knots within the muscle, hard points that often have a kind of a buildup of lactic acid within the fibers, and uh, roll them out. Pretty painful, but if I can put up and get through it, I feel like I get better workout within this muscle group. So, I put all my body weight on, and then slowly roll it down that muscle. There's a there's a point there. Right now, I'm hitting. Pretty much all of my quads forcing through the weight of my own body weight for those muscle fibers to open up against against that roller. Not so bad now, but towards the end of the workout when it kind of it's buffering the lactic acid from reaching failure, you've got to get that out. That's where it becomes painful and can pretty much draw a tear to the eye, but again that before or after question. I pretty much stretch out this way throughout the active rest periods between making sure I get both legs. Slow movement, so I'm not rushing back and forth. Slowly taking it down my muscle, I find that, that knot, and then just manipulate my body, moving my body weight over it until it breaks apart. Okay, get some more weight back on the bar. Time to add another, another 70 pounds on here. Still a warm up for me, so I want to go deep. I want to open up those fibers. The really important the warm up is to really effectively prepare that muscle to go all out with as much weight, which is where you overload, and it leads to that growth, given the good rest, recovery, and nutrition. So. Back on the roller now, time to hit those IT bands and start to move around to the glutes and the ham. So of course they're targeted with that squat motion. IT bands are always a hard one. So you're basically using like a, a rolling action to clear that lactic acid any knots kind of deeper within the muscle tissue. There's a painful one there. 
and I won't always get them out, but just to be able to know where they are, target them and work on it. Like tonight when I get home, I'll work on my legs a little bit more using a foam roller. About 20 minutes all over, just on my legs and calves. Again, my, my limit here, my goal, is 12 reps. And the reason for that is, for the past couple of competitions I've had in just years of training, I found I see better results when I stick with a set rep range. For me, it's about time under tension. And if I'm lessening the repetitions, sure, my muscles might be lifting more weight, but I'm lifting them for a shorter period of time. Heavy-ish, but still not quite my max weight, so 12 rep, this should be somewhat comfortable. Now. Two more work sets, again, progressively taking that weight up and then switching it up from the insertion to the origin and on the leg press. So when it comes to uh, big movements, big compound movements, in fact any movement when I'm working out, I'm always consciously trying to think of how effectively am I training that muscle. When I was younger, just a few years ago, I was trying to lift as much weight as I could and find I'd be struggling, losing my technique and therefore not actually feeling it in the muscle. But in the last year alone, when I've been focusing more on the quality of the movement rather than the overall weight, I'm actually walking out of the gym and really feeling it the next day, like when I first started training. And feeling that DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness, in whichever, whichever body part I'm training, knowing that I'm actually really working that muscle and overloading it so that it will come back stronger, hopefully bigger, for that next workout. So, I've actually reduced the, uh, the maximum weight that I had been lifting, and now going for better quality reps. This is probably getting, getting up to the weight that I would normally lift for maybe six to eight reps. Not that heavy, I know. And I'm sure a lot of you can lift more. I know I could a couple of years back. But I try and go low on these. And uh, when I hit my maximum kind of uh, training threshold, I'll rack it back up and incorporate what is a rest pause where I keep the same weight, I don't drop any of the weight down. But as soon as I reach my training threshold, I rack it back, give myself a rest for 10, 15 seconds max, no more, and then back up and aim for at least two or three more solid repetitions where I fire up those type 2B muscle fibers, those growth fibers that can actually grow up to 100% as opposed to 25% a third of those normal type 2 fibers. So, seconds is just enough to allow my muscles to recoup maybe a fifth, 20, 30 percent at most of some of the energy back. Just enough to get maybe two or three good quality reps where I'm actually 
using good technique and form. I say just throwing that weight up anywhere possible. So let's go straight back into it. Two. Not that great, but still two more reps than I would have got had I tried to push through on that first set. So, short recovery, and then uh, probably one final set, I'll incorporate a drop set on here. Alright guys, final set on legs, and for me, I want to push it up a little bit higher, so I've done my rest pause. I don't use that one again for the same exercise. What I'll do is go heavier and do a drop set. So from those three plates to the side, I'm adding 15 on 30 altogether. As many as I can on here. Four would be great, but as long as I can get a good two or three, I'm good. And then uh, plenty of harm feel. For this one, I'm going to take 15 and 45 off. What I would have done is maybe load it up with 35 so therefore I can take off a smaller increment each time. Really about 20% of that total weight, but this will still shock the muscle. Probably seen by now I don't have a belt, no special shoes, although sometimes I will squat just without shoes. And uh, no gloves or anything. Just a personal preference. I've been doing this long enough that I like to know how my body feels and if I go too low where I'm having to rely on like a belt to be able to lift me back up or knee straps. Again, I just don't feel like I'm effectively working the muscle. So, just my personal preference and the goal that I'm trying to attend to. I haven't done squats for a couple of weeks because I had a, a knee problem while snowboarding, so no excuses, although it is one. Just gotta be careful how low I go and how hard I push it, but you know, always train within your limit. What's interesting is now I've kind of pyramided up in the same rep range, dropping back down. This way should feel easier than the first time I did it. So again, better quality reps, as deep as I can go. Bit of an active recovery now. Back on the travel roller. Buffer out some of that lactic acid that I know I build up during that squat. And then on the next exercise. <laughs>